your screens. Uh, the second one, the second one is that if you are not speaking, please turn off your mic. So rules are pretty simple. What we have to do is to get to know with all our guests, friends, and members from other clubs. So please, Dave, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Art Talkers. Yes, well, well, I'm an American. I live in Brassmasters in Kiev, Ukraine, and that's globalization. <laughs> so thank you very much. I appreciate the invitation. I'm looking forward thank to Thank you, Dave. We are today. glad to see you during our meeting as well. Uh, Margarita, please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, everyone. I am a quite frequent guest here at Art Talkers. Usually I go to Nipper Hills Club, uh, of which we have some members here as well. And I also go to a small uh, British club uh, in Hartford because they're also meeting online. And it's a great opportunity Thank you. for globalization. Ms. Margarita, Davis, you're not a frequent you. guest. You are almost our member. <laughs> Thank you a lot for your introduction. So, Aksana, please. Introduce Hi, yourself. everybody. Nice to see you. I'm a teacher of English, and I heard about your club from Andrei, one of your members or one of your guests. And I'm really honored and glad to see uh, to see you and to practice English and maybe to learn something new and meet some people. So, thank you and. Okay, thank uh, you, Aksana. Really you are yeah. welcome. You are welcome in our club. So, if Andrew has been mentioned in Aksana's introduction, so Andrew, the speech is yours. Like the oh. stage is yours. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, so, guys, this is my third time here. Uh, almost uh, not not nervous already. So, uh, I'm glad to see. Uh, Familiar faces. Glad to see Oksana here. Uh, I know she was so excited when I when I proposed this opportunity, and uh, I hope I hope uh, that uh, she will become uh, the I don't know constant member. And uh, uh, like my feeling, yeah, for our sessions, and I believe Oksana will be there. Also. Thank you. And Andrew, we believe that you will join our club as well. <laughs> Thank you. Anna Nashmurko from Svaya Rubashka Club, you are welcome. Just unmute yourself, we can hear you. And nod your head if you can hear us. Okay, her screen is frozen, I, I think so. So the last um, participant who hasn't introduced herself is Olga, I think so. So Olga, please, you're welcome. Yeah, hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm sorry for my voice, I'm actually a little sick. So maybe online form is even better so that I can join you without so yeah, I'm glad to hear you guys. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. So our 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 first part introduction is over and I'm passing the floor to our charming Toastmaster, who is today Tanya Kifarishina. You are welcome. Hello, dear guys. And today the topic of our meeting is healthy food. And uh, I would like to suggest you to eat something really healthy for this time, for these days, while you are being at quarantine, nobody would make and will show you nothing like, uh, except you would really like to eat. For example, there would, there would be no cakes, would be nothing which will be attract your attention to something which you don't like. So you can just use this time for really uh, proper and healthy food, and maybe to improve even the style of life. And uh, our account 
writer for today would be very charming lady. And I think the role of a counter is very important because we cannot improve our speeches without a person who see our mistake. And when you are talking, please just pay enough attention, not only to what you say, but how you say it. And please, our chairman, Yura Kalitinska, the word is for you. Thank you, Tanya. Yes, the role of today of mine is to be an accountant. I will count all unnecessary sounds such as air, arm and different crash words, you know, and so on, and etc. Um, there was a joke that in the garden, that in the kindergarten for riches, the cook was fired because he prepared tiramisu with lumps. Imagine that your speeches are sweet tiramisu and scratch words are small lumps. Not attractive, right? So I will not fire you, but in the end of the meeting, I will tell you report. Enjoy perf your performances, enjoy your speeches and avoid different scratch words. Thank you. The next person, which are also very helpful in this meeting, who is very helpful in this meeting, is a timer. It's a English proverb that friends are sieves of time, and friends who we are here with us are not sieves of time. And who we are without time? Actually, time is the material of which consists our life. So please, uh, Pay attention to time and look at Margarita Malikova. Margarita has something to say to you. Oh, yes, thank you, Tatiana. I will be your timer for today, everyone, and help, will help you make sure that uh, this meeting runs smoothly and everything is on time. So first, we have uh, two speeches today, and speeches are usually between five and seven minutes long. So at seven minutes, I will show you uh, the green background and at six minutes, yellow and at seven, red. We also have table topics and these are smaller speeches, usually two minutes long. So at one minute, I will show you the green background at one and a half, yellow and at two, red. We also have some evaluations people evaluating uh, both their speeches and table topics. So for the speech evaluations, these are five minutes long. So at three minutes, I will show you, oh, sorry, at two minutes, I will show you green at uh, two and a half, yellow and a three red. And then our table topic evaluation is a uh, longer type of evaluation because we usually have more people taking part yellow and at five that will show you red uh, sorry hope that was not confusing and back to you Tatiana thank you Margarita um, we all know that body is important and we know that language is important but what about Given a speech at your club for the first time. Not even that today, I'm give speech is for love, and I really worry because now knowledge of English is very important for my work because in English. And that's why I'm here today. Um, to the country republic and my impression of this country. Uh, my decision about this trip was very, and I was 
I started and angry, I went to my own neighbors to drink coffee. The next day, you bought tickets to the first step of the plane. It was so fresh and so many palm trees around. Uh, the airport was very close. Got there during the pandemic, had um, both pros and cons. First, pros, there were very few people. Uh, and it's, but at the same time, uh, I really want the Republic is the homeland of Chatham. Um, such parties weren't held in hotels, and the most popular club in the, uh, I should um, say that I don't like lying on, on the beach and sunbathing, uh, and I never, uh, I never for myself, but I went to Europe and in early days, I thought uh, I was crazy because, uh, yes, it was beautiful, very dark voice. The scent was pleasant, uh, and breeze and freshness in the air. Um, all was uh, everything uh, of the guys. There were six of us enjoyed it uh, all, all so much, but I enjoyed my uh, um, change dramatically. Uh, it was an um, excursion. Uh, everyone um, says it's like, like bounty at so fabulous, this island uh, um, is small, uh, so dark voice and uh, the sand uh, and sand very clean and, and also flooded in real pineapple. <laughs> uh, uh, I didn't like because I felt sorry for them. People like said um, they shouldn't be taken out of the water. Uh, and uh, there it was the ocean with this road and champagne. It was cool. Also visited the city of artists. This little magic place, um, which represents Europe. It was also fabulous. Uh, and then the forest in the ocean. And I once again felt in the fairy. Tales, um, virus of the Caribbean, um, other island, uh, Bacardi Island. Uh, it was uh, very different, from, but still beautiful. Um, but my maybe my bright. Dominican Republic, um, they are good to uh, and uh, ten minutes more uh, flew to um, Wild Beach.
the, the fall the balloon, uh, but it, it was that was before um, the first we got used to falling and uh, some are sorting hard. <laughs> and uh, it hit me on the head. Uh, so, and I want, uh, want, want to talk uh, about uh, one more thing uh, the mini cans, uh, because they are so friends. I like the fact that uh, many of them uh, are not rich and without help, uh, they, <laughs> um, they may ask me if I want more, uh, I will answer yes. Uh, do I recommend you this country? Worth it. Thank you. Thank you for the speech. It was really brilliant, I would say, because you were just a, a little bit shy to deliver it. I remember your words, but still, it was um, it was only that what you were thinking about. It's really great. Thank you. And uh, the next thing, I want to say that we have many different phenomena in our lives. And about one of the phenomena today, we will hear from our beloved friend and member of our talker, Anna Martinova. Please, Anna Martinova, phenomenon. Good morning, everyone. Uh, before I start my speech, I would like to ask you to be interactive. I will ask you some questions. So please write your answers in the chat and react somehow. And in the, uh, close to the end, we'll have a small quiz. So please participate. Uh, the first question is, uh, do you know what main Swedish experts are? Any ideas? Any famous remarks that you maybe remember? Please write in the chat. While you are thinking, I would mention that maybe you remember IKEA, yes, Volvo for sure, uh, South uh, H and M, uh, Spotify, Ericsson. So the main uh, Swedish experts include machinery, transport equipment, rubber products. Uh, clothing, textiles, uh, wood, and furniture. But here is an eye opening fact. On per capita basis, Sweden is one of the leading world exporters of pop music. Sweden is a very famous competitor and very successful competitor in the Eurovision Song Contest with a total six victories so far. But the most famous expert of Sweden in the realm of pop music is ABBA, which is a worldwide music phenomenon. ABBA is the Swedish pop music group, which was extremely popular in 1970s, early 1980s. I would and other ABBA sold so many records that only the Beatles had sold more. So, do you know what ABBA stands? Please sum up if you know. If you do not know, I'll tell you. The name of our is made from first letters of uh, each participant's first name. And this is Agnetha Fixkov, Bjorn Ulvaeus, Benny Anderson, and Annie Free Linkson. And here is the picture for you to understand Agnetha the blonde, uh, then Bjorn the man without the beard. Benny, the man with the beard, and 
Penny Fried or Frieda the Brunette. By the way, uh, the Brunette, Penny Fried, was one in Norway. So if you ask Norwegian, they can tell you that Abba is one for Norwegian. All four Abba members had their uh, individual music careers before Abba was formed. Agnette and Frida were solo singers, and Benny and Bjorn had their individual uh, music bands. In 1966, Benny and Bjorn met and decided to write songs together. In 1969, Agnette uh, and, uh, sorry, Bjorn met and Benny met Frida, and all four friends started to record songs together. You know that history of Abba is history of two real-life couples, because by 1971, Bjorn and Agnette were married, and Benny and Frida were engaged. But it wasn't until 1973 that Abba officially appeared. The name of the group ABBA was suggested by Stig Andersen, the manager of the group. But before that time, when they performed their songs, they called a fest folk. If you know Swedish, that's party people. So in 1973, the official name of group ABBA appeared. It should be noted that ABBA, the musical band, had to ask permission from ABBA the city company to use their name. Not other way, in 1974, Abba participated in Eurovision and with the song Waterloo, they won and they got a worldwide success and countless fans all over the world. In 1976, they write their signature song, which is Dancing Queen. And many people call this song the best or the greatest pop music song ever written. During 1977, the popularity of ABBA is rising, and they perform in Europe, in the United States, in Australia, and in Japan. However, as I mentioned, the history of ABBA is history of two real life couples. And in 1979, a connecting Benny and uh, Frida divorced too, and uh, that led to many sadder and more mysterious songs over the last years of the band. The last album they released together was called The Visitors, and it was in 1982. So shortly before 1983, uh, the band broke up. And all participants of the band continued their individual music careers uh, as they did before they had mass. In spite of the fact that the band broke up in 1982, the uh, music is still popular. Let us prove this. I will play you the music and uh, you, you will guess the name of the song. Please write the correct answer in the chat. You can do so. Yes, of course, this is happening every year. We hear it every year. The next one. Do you know? Yes, of course, this is famous money, money, money. The next one. The name of the song was already there. Yes, yes, it is super, super. Right. 
here is the next one. You can dance. Yes, and Ray Buddhist is the superhero. <laughs> So that was my small quiz. So here is the question. Why upper songs are so popular even now? Because the group itself broke up in 1982. The simple question uh, gives us a simple answer. Number one, upper songs were created by talented creators and great performers of beautiful melodies. Number two, each song of ABBA is catchy, but it doesn't sound like any other song of ABBA. And number three, they are, songs are danceable and singable. So ABBA songs are nice to listen. That's why we hear them everywhere, even now, because real art is time. Uh, thank you very much, Anna, for this great, inspire and absolutely amazing speech. I was just uh, on the cloud nine while I was just uh, listening and recalling all there. I, I'm sure every one of us has have has beautiful memories from that period, and it's great. And the uh, Abba is classic, and it just always brings good in people. Whether they just um, are in this period of time, or they maybe they think that they live uh, maybe their memories for some time, but Abba is really great to grow. And thank you a lot for this uh, speech. The next period of our time would be dedicated to impromptu speeches. They are also very good for improvement, and they also have very big meaning. And to uh, do this role, to make this role for us, I encourage to the stage our chairman, Ruslan Vancharov. Ruslan Vancharov, Sable Topic Master for today. Hello, hello, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Ruslan. Do you hear me? Do you see me? Okay, great. My name is Ruslan, and next 20 minutes will be dedicated to so-called table topic session, the part of our meeting where I will be practicing and publishing our public speaking impromptu without any preparations. So I prepared lots of questions dedicated, mostly dedicated to eating, dedicated to food, dedicated to healthy food, and, and even unhealthy food too. And during the, this table topic session, I'm going to ask some questions, and you, you, and you are in charge to answer, to answer us, to share your thoughts, but only within two minutes. So please follow Margarita. Margarita is our timer for today, and she is going to change her. Despite he stated uh, he's, he's full, he was going to change her background, <laughs> today he is changing her foreground. So follow Margarita, use your two minutes fully in the fullest, and uh, I think it's time to start our beautiful and perfect tabletop session dedicated to healthy food. Today I prepared not the questions, I prepared some dishes, some cuisines. And the first dish as a starter, the first question will be a bit, a bit, um, a bit alarming. What do you, what do you think? Do you ever think that the food you eat is not safe do you ever think that the food you eat is not safe who has something for us who has some idea dave, dave from bratislava please welcome yes uh, fellow toastmasters definitely i was 
worried about the foods that I eat. So I made an appointment with my dad and me, and he did uh, ultrasound uh, during the examination. And he said, oh, Mr. Reichardt, you have changed your diet. And I said, doctor, you have insulted me for the last time. Okay. <laughs> Something that some of you know about this keto, keto diet, keto diet. And what I learned from watching like 25 YouTube videos about types of the keto diet, there's the so-called clean keto diet. And the clean diet, you are fasting for 18 hours, and then you have one, and then there's the so-called dirty keto diet, where you're fasting for only 14 hours a day, and you, you're eating two low-carbohydrate meals per day. But then there's actually a third alternative, which I have developed myself. It's called called the very dirty keto diet. And you're, fast, you're fasting for eight hours a day while you're sleeping. And then you have three normal meals per day, plus a pepperoni <laughs> pizza, the very dirty keto diet. And I'm very, very happy with it. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters. Hello. Thank you, thank you, Dave, for your for your answer. And uh, my next question, my next question is dedicated to sticking sticking to diet. As Dave mentioned that uh, the doctor advised him to stick to diet. And my next question is: Do you think what is your attention? What is your receiving of a sticking of a diet? Does uh, Sticking the diet is uh, has some benefits or maybe have some disadvantages. Who can share his opinion? Pros and cons of sticking the diet. Olga, Olga, I see the uh -huh, Olga. Yes. Hi. Uh, well. As much as I know people, I believe that for somebody, actually sticking to the diet is the only way the person can live because the person uh, who needs to be uh, grounded by rules uh, also has to be grounded by rules in the diet. And such kinds of people like uh, eat, wage their food and they eat exactly as much as they have to. And uh, uh, it depends on the character actually. Uh, for me, I'm totally not that kind of person. <laughs> to me, sticking to the diet is the worst thing I can ever have. <laughs> so uh, for me, if somebody would put the diet on me, like a medical uh, order, I would be totally unhappy. <laughs> because I um, and such kind of people as me, like, I mean, creative and uh, intuitive, uh, like, to behave the way they feel at the moment, not the way like <laughs> the doctor said. So uh, I believe the best and the most healthy way for herself feels happy. Sometimes it is, it means sticking to the diet. Sometimes it means being totally uh, intuitive and following your heart. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Olga. And the same question goes to Michael Bedwell. Oh, hello. Can people hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Well, I, I've just brought up on the saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And for most of my long life, I'm well, people usually say that for an uh, that uh, at my age um, I should be dead. <laughs> um, diets are really uh, doctors or specialists in uh, in uh, nutrition, uh, 
who are trying to make a name for themselves. Um, and if you get your name, if we could have a, a rustling called uh, on Charlie, or some people rush out to eat it. Um, I would not. And uh, in the last 30 years, I have lived in uh, Ukraine, uh, the UK here, and the, the, the traditional diets in each country are quite different, yet um, I, I, I think just by eating a little of what you fancy uh, and so they don't drink a lot of wine, they drink wine very just uh, to follow those uh, habits indeed I read recently that people tend to eat and drink like the people they meet stuffing his mouth with <laughs> lots of bread uh, and pizza you tend to follow suit so that's my way thank you yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. The next question, the next question goes especially for our guest, our rare guest, Victor Bruso. Uh, there is a proverb that you are what not. Proverb? Yes, I know that Victor is, uh, he is a uh, a great promoter of eating some insects, fried insects, insects, and I think Victor has something for us, some something exotic for us. Oh, well, well, I've been expecting for this question really, because actually I'm biologist for people who didn't know me, so that's why I've been traveling in a different universities to read some lectures and make a study and in some countries i had opportunity to try some unique and unusual food so and it's not connected with any diet because this food is connected with strange animals like insects right and what insects did i eat actually i've been eating some insects in china because in china Chinese people can do everything for, for the food. And for that, they cooked uh, especially pupae of butterflies and actually the whole butterflies. Okay, you can say, uh, where did we collect them? Okay, we were breeding them in a factory. And then we were just cooking uh, with cream, the pupae, and making a big dish with pupae like that. So pupae were very tasty, like with cream inside. So you need to use Chinese sticks, uh, two sticks to take them. So it was very tasty. And and, and also this whole butterfly, what means whole butterflies? The abdomen of butterflies, full of eggs. So they were cooked also with the cream and with spices. And it's... Uh, Sounds strange, actually, but butterflies big, big size of butterflies. So that's why the abdomen and belly were very big, were full of eggs, like caviar. So that's why taste was unusual. And if you say, what is the taste? I say, taste of insects. So that's why if you are going to Thailand, I do not advise you to taste Thai insects because we were cooking with not uh, very healthy conditions but if you can take some insects and cook them at home okay that's possible because i cooked some insects at home and i showed on my channel and it was a great fun so sometimes you can change the diet and can cook even insects not somewhere in the forest but even in your kitchen and surprise your friends and everybody in your family because everybody will think that we are crazy so thank you for your attention and do not cook insects in a forest it's not healthy but at home very good okay thank you 
Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Victor. The next question, the next question is uh, like, in, there is a German proverb, wir essen um zu leben und nicht leben um zu essen, which is, uh, which is eat to live but do not live to eat. Do you agree with this or not? Because I think sometimes we are focusing too much on eating, on eating the food, on diet, and so on and so on. And sometimes it seems our life is fully dedicated only to take some products. What do you think about this proverb? The Essen um zu leben und nicht leben und zu essen. Okay. This question goes to Graham. Ich stimme zu. I, I agree with them. But all that said, you, you should watch, and this goes to Dave, you should watch, and Michael, I, I took a, a moment out of your speech because my timer is kind of, kind of characteristic. As I grew up in America, we always thought that you bought Libby's pumpkin in a can and then you bought condensed milk and I have found that you can use a real tikva and it's extremely I think that this is healthy, healthy eating it is to hello I, I'm hearing some music I, I think that the um, the the what is going into what you what you're eating, so you can <clears throat> and the general rule would be cook it yourself, cook it from fresh, out the balance of uh, keto or vegetables or whatever. Just uh, make sure you know what you're eating. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next question is... My next question is, do you like fast food? Or maybe do you like so-called slow food? What do you think about 